Welcome to Black Love Matters, where this service and therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. And find our Anna Brock and Michelle. Or Jay Z and Beyonce. Or in this episode, how about we go with Ryan Coogler and his boo thing, Z- um, Zinzi Evans. Zinzi, right near him. Yeah, Zinzi. Yeah, that's actually really cute, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Zinzi Evans. Um, it's no secret that the Black Panther director, Ryan Coogler, really loves his wife, um, Zinzi. In a recent interview with Hot 97, the blockbuster film creator credited um, Zinzi with having a big hand in investing in his dreams dating way back when he was in um, college. He goes on to say that my wife, she was my girl at the time, and um, they had a software where you could write screenplays. He told the radio host um, that Ebro's at the... Yeah, Ebro in the morning. Is he? Nope. We're focused on Ryan. Ibrahim. Mm-mm. And the rose and, and the whole that diversity of crew. Okay. <laughs> they like the UN, they, that's New York. Anywho, um, I was trying to write in Microsoft Word. This nigga was trying to write screenplays in Microsoft Word. I hear you, brother. Oh, look, in that sentence, it was impossible because your format got to be right. I was about to say, how the hell he do that? Microsoft Word barely want to end it, <laughs> let alone do the format that you need to do, you know, I imagine to write a screenplay. Mm-hmm. Um, again, he said, it's impossible because your format got to be right. I was broke playing football on a little scholarship money and my wife scraped together some cheese and bought me Final Draft, which is a software that you need to write your movies on. And she got me like that. Now, that's how you show black love and support. Mm-hmm. Think, yeah, it is. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's beautiful, right? Yeah. It kind of reminds me of our love story. Oh, how so, Nair? Hey, you know, my girl Nayambi helped me down when I got that 1.2 GPA. Mm-hmm. And she said, nigga, we ain't going to the movies. We going to the library. Can't go to no movies. No, 1.2. <laughs> 1.2 is going to go to the library. I mean, to the movies. I, I done left that black college and came to this I white school. I can go to the movies. You came to this PWI. Fucking classrooms went from uh, 25 to 500. Yeah. My ass fucked the fuck Remember up. Remember when movies like $3? Yeah. And I remember, like, you had to prepare yourself for that. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun then. Yeah. Like, shit, $3 movies. Or, I mean, it wasn't every day, but it was like no, certain days. Like, it was, like Tuesday. Three or four it's dollars. like, you know, how they got the uh, $5, $5 Tuesdays. Yeah. The prices then went up. The price of the brick then went up. Y'all. I just, just be thinking, like, I remember us being like, all right, next Wednesday we're going. Everyone get their $6. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're going to see two, two movies. movies. Yeah, it used to be an all day event. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That used to be a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. I think we should have an episode about that. And, um, you know, because I think a lot of questions folks get is, you know, when do you, when do you when is when? Mm-hmm. So when do you invest too much into a partner or not? You know, and is this a one sided thing? Right? Is it usually black women who invest in black men? You know, what are the examples of black men investing in black women? Mm-hmm. Like, I think that would be a great um, kind of show topic. Yeah, but kind of started from the bottom. Now I'm here. Like you know, when when you're in a relationship and you're both build, I guess that's the key. You have to build together. Mm-hmm. But building together, how do you how do you balance that? Mm-hmm. Do you have to choose between career and love? And when folks traditionally talk about career and love, I think they talk about the successful people or the folks on the grind trying to find love. But when you're in a relationship, you, there's choices and sacrifices that have to also be made, too. Right. And if you're willing to and what's the stakes and all that, I think that's a great conversation. I think but I is. am happy they get together. He bet not. He better stay with this woman in t- 10 years when he a black Steven Spielberg. No, forget that. John Singleton. We used to talk about our home, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> He better not leave no Z, um, what's her, I'm going to call it ZZ. That is her name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's her name. <laughs> I'm sure that's her I'm nickname. I'm sure her nickname is ZZ. <laughs> <laughs> her name is Zinzi. Yeah, yeah ZZ. Because it's just black. Yeah. Even in his state. Again, I keep going back to Ryan. Can someone do a qualitative study on Ryan Coogler and his lack of code switching? Because even in this um, quote, I, I had to adjust my tone. You hear me? I was trying to write in Ross Microsoft Word. It's impossible because your format got to be right. I was broke. Um, what did he say? I had to give me some cheese. But <laughs> I was broke out here trying to play on this little scholarship money. It's <laughs> that scholarship money do be little. And they think they start adding numbers. Like you think it's a lot until you don't get paid. Shit. Come on. You ain't getting no stipend. Anyway, can't trade that shit into a, for a meal card. <laughs> What else you think about that? Nigga? I love it, man. I, I really think it's dope that. Um, like when I when I sing that choir, it, it made me think about you. Like mm-hmm. all the things that we did and I helped you with, you helped me with during undergrad. Great, great. Yeah. Who is you? I'm Nero. And I'm Nayambi. And this is episode 109. 109. Yeah. Be sure to leave a one, two, three, four, five star rating review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher. And follow us on all forms of social media. And that's at Black Love Matters. Remember, that's black with no K. Got an update? Of course.
Christmas. Happy Wednesday, y'all. It's always good to, you know, connect. It's good to be kind of back on a routine again, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, I was lit because last night, This Is Us came back on. Oh, Stay shit. tuned on Friday for that update. Oh, shit. I cannot wait. It's the week everything happened. The crossover with Annalise in. Um, Damn, it is March. Damn, Hilson. it's March? Fuck. Yeah. I've been sick for a month. You know Black History Month over. <laughs> Speaking of update, at the bot store, all the black people, since I've been back, they always get me on like black stuff. I didn't realize I come off this Afrocentric, but I guess I do. But so initially they came to me, they was like, Nyambi, I might already said this on the podcast, I'm not sure. Because we have a board of events in the month. So like random things. So like Pie Day, mm-hmm. Cookie National Cookie Day. And on ours, it was like Black History Day. What? <laughs> and who the crew come to? You. How they say it near them. No, you ain't be. What the hell? I is said, it? hi, good morning. Good morning. Mm-hmm. I said, what's going on with y'all? The fuck is this Black History Day? I said, huh? I said, it's Black History Month. No. They look said, at not according to Bot Story. <laughs> <laughs> We only get one day. And so, of course, I was like, y'all going to say something? It's like, who's coming to you? I was like, all right. So, of course, I bring it. Now they done made a black history. Well, so they done changed the little, um, I mean, they ain't do too much, but mm. they changed the little um, outline of it. Now it's like Kente Club. <laughs> <laughs> and they put who the honorary ones up there. Oh. MLK, mm. Rosa Parks. Yeah. I started to be petty, be like, well, who's the bl- a notable black person in the company? <laughs> Nyambi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it ain't that many of us. I said we should have did a daily highlight of each of the black store members. Right. <laughs> but I was like, I better not start doing that because they've been like, that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Let's start with you now. And they've been ahead all types of cases on our asses. We'd be on the news. Right. Store discriminates <laughs> in Black History Month initiative. <laughs> But what we started doing, we started doing two things. So what we did, every time we see each other, we greet each other and say, happy Black History Month this whole month. Mm. So I'd be like, hey, we'll say Garrett. Hey, Garrett, happy Black History Month. Happy Black History Month, Naomi. And so all the white people be like, what, what the fuck? And not only that, we got some New York and y'all say they black. Cool. So we'll be the black folks, black, black, civil rights, black, and Wakanda black people. I'll be like, happy Black History Month. And then the New Yorkers just look at us. <laughs> we was waiting for them to join in right. or what? Black History I Month. I get we get them to Puerto Rican Latin American Month. And what's that, in September? No, that's the Asian American. November? Oh, we don't miss theirs. <laughs> that ain't our fault. They should have came to us. They should have said something. So they just got to look at us. And it's also one person, we're not sure, Um, the Black Caucus of the bot store, we're not sure if he's black. And oh. none of us is cool enough to ask him. <laughs> ain't nobody asking you who you are like black panther <laughs> and then oh i'm not to the icing so we like y'all today or yesterday was the last day we was like it's over what should we do and one fool we gonna say garrett again he said we should extend the month <laughs> <laughs> and no and then somebody a young girl was like why don't we just do the wakanda salute to each other every time we see each other <laughs> so our dumb asses Instead of speaking to say hello, we just do the cross our hand. You know the cross. Yeah, we gotta just bow y'all head. We we don't bow. Our ass. We <laughs> just kind of forever. We just we don't say we're going to forever. <laughs> we just cross our hands at each other. That's how we greet each other now. And we will start to do it of today. Well, yesterday, and we'll just see each other. We'll be like, hey, <laughs> uh, I do this so y'all can hear it. <laughs> And everybody at the store, the white people were like, what the fuck is the niggas planning? I think they think we plotting on their ass. Uh-huh. So that's how we greet each other. Because Garrett was like, we need to extend Black History Month because they initially gave us a day. Uh-huh. And just out of resistance. Yeah, just going to extend it to whatever. We, we, uh, and this fool said we should extend it to the day after St. Patrick's Day, the most racist holiday of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I said more than 4th of July <laughs> and he said yes more than 4th of July and thanks taking because that's the day um, St. Patrick's Day they can literally get belligerently drunk like cause it's just the it's like white people Halloween right mm-hmm. they just lose their fucking mind on um, St. Patrick's Day have you ever heard somebody say that's the most racist holiday of the year no I haven't I thought I, which one you think it is thanks taking or 4th of July 4th of July I thought thanks taking was the most racist mm-hmm. um, but I don't know not that I maybe flesh on it it do get a little racist on St. Patrick's Day. If it you do. take your ass to Boston <laughs> on St. Patrick's Day, you're gonna be fighting and, and all type of Irish motherfuckers because they're gonna be saying nothing but nigga. <laughs> you're right. I think you know. You take your ass to Boston on St. Patrick's Day or any major city with white people compared to Thanksgiving. I do think you might get a little more talk back on St. Patrick's Day and compared. I don't think nobody losing their fucking mind on Thanksgiving. Mm. Do you know? Like, yeah, I hear what you're saying. So that's what they was like. No, this is the most racist holiday of the year. This is where. Th- that's why I made it sound like Halloween. They was like. 
Garrett dumbass. This is when white people show their true colors on St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. I was like, what? I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? This is something in their green juice that they be drinking. It is nothing but truth potion. Oh. Or like truth serum. They don't call them fighting Irish for nothing. <laughs> he said it's something in that green beer juice that is nothing but truth serum. And if anybody goes to them, they're going to tell you the truth. So you have to be very careful. <laughs> he said, I usually like to take that day off and stay in the house. I've never heard anyone describe St. Patrick's Day like this. But now, but now I understand. Shit, especially I'm about to buy a store and a bunch of college. I might need to lay low. Mm-hmm. This Take is the most, that deal. And he said, "That's what we're going to stem Black History Month into the day after." <laughs> well, speaking of uh, National uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, I didn't know it flowed through two months. Yeah, I know a lot of them September, do that. September fifteenth to October fifteenth. Where the hell are they? They, they just couldn't pick them up. That's why we're sending ours through St. Patrick's. Okay. So ours is February 1st to what? March 18th? They, they ain't say September. They just say, no, we're just going to take two months. Got it. We're just going to pick some days. And Asian American Month do that too. I, I know think that. Asian American Month is April and May. Oh, let me check and see. Um, and Native American Month got one too. Mm-hmm. All of those. I used to remember them from higher ed. Yeah, because you know, every time. You had to participate in all yeah, of those. Yeah, donuts and discussions. Oh, look, Asian it. Pacific Heritage Month don't even come up in the Google search. Sure don't. Um, but no, I think it is. Oh, see, it's in May. Oh, okay. It takes place in May. Um, and I don't know where. I forgot what Native American. Okay. <laughs> but at the bot store, that's uh-huh. what we doing. So what you you think we crazy? No. If I had some black people in my office, I'd be doing Wakanda forever too. Do you think we pushing up? The, what What do y'all think the white people say when we cross our arms? I'm pretty sure some white people just seen um, Black Panther. Mm. They didn't look. They doing the Black Panther thing. But no, they bold enough to be like, no, our white people didn't try to do it at our store. And then we really got to check them. Hey, Naomi. <laughs> what the Wakanda? What, what in the Wakanda is this? What, the, what type of Wakanda? <laughs> Shit is this? They white wolf. <laughs> now they the white wolf. They the white cubs. <laughs> White puppies in his bed. What just said? What they just got here? They steal everything. They do. So that's what's going on. Look, that's the bot store. Mm-hmm. Um, something else I'm excited about is Michelle. Um, what's her name? Laverne. I think that's her name. Um, Laverne, Levine, baby. What Levine. I say, Laverne? Laverne. Levine. I thought that was a little old for no, Michelle. Michelle Laverne. Yeah, I said Laverne sound old. Laverne. Um. Obama, Robinson Obama will be coming out with a book November 2018 and the name of it is Becoming Michelle Obama and it is a very um, personal memoir and I'm fucking here for it. I actually wish I can pre-order it. Um, Is she going on fucking tour? How can she, how can I get the book signed? And I'm here for the shit. I forgot. What, I don't know. The book deal was sickening in itself. Oh, it got to be because this book is about to break records because every black woman in the world is ordering it. <laughs> Everywhere oh, Amazon is shipped, it's going to be sold out. Actually, Michelle Obama could write any, many, many more on those fucking pages. And I'm going to say it's good. They say it's going to be like 60 million. Her deal or her gross? The deal. Just the deal in itself. Right, that's what I'm going to say. That seemed low. For a gross, Mm-mm, just a deal. Oh yeah, I mean they're gonna make that though, Nero. I know I'm because much... Lady Bird Johnson. I'm sure her book deal made, and we all know exactly who's Lady Bird Johnson. Come on, but everyone knows about Queen Michelle yeah. Levine Robinson Obama. <laughs> Could you imagine? I don't. Need the, and the thing is, I hope she spills the tea. I hope she spills every fucking. But thing. She don't even gotta fucking spill the tea. It's her. Mm. So even if she's not spilling it to you, she's going to give us some nuggets to help us navigate through this white privilege, and I'm here for it. Gotcha. You think she's going to do a book tour? Hell yeah. How do you get, like, is it going to be an accessible book tour, or is it going to be like an Oprah Super Soul Sunday book tour that I'm not going to be assess- have accessibility to? It's going to be like Harvard and shit. Oh, my God. Please come to help us. We're poor. Come. Come. The bars and no. <laughs> 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 or, or team up with Google and do some hangouts or something. Just do some hangouts. So we can see you. <laughs> no. Yeah, I hear you, baby. Is it too much? No. I don't think it's on Amazon, Nero. Oh, I'm checking to see. No, it's not. I think you got to go see Michelle Levon Robinson Obama said you go to her fucking website. What? That's what she told me to do. On her Insta. Oh. She told me to go to Michelle Levine Robinson Obama dot com for details. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she 
she said, don't check no other resources. Hell, she might uh, drop this shit on title. What? <laughs> now title do audible. Audible out of business. <laughs> now audible out of business. <laughs> so I, that just made my black girl joy. Um, it makes me a little bit sad because it don't come out to November and November's mm-hmm. back to Christmas. Like That's almost a year. Well, that's the best time for books to come out. So. But why she tell me now? To get y'all niggas hype. She could have told me this like in August. It's still cold. That's it's the holiday season. Yes, but why are you still telling me now when it's cold? <laughs> so she can get y'all niggas warmed up. I only need two months' notice. She okay. need to get like Beyonce <laughs> and, and just give drop us it. thirty minutes. No- <laughs> Come on, could you imagine if <laughs> Michelle Obama went on Twitter, Instagram, and was like, "Hey, bitches, I dropped my book." <laughs> What? Here's my book. It, here's your money. <laughs> Come on. And I'm going on tour the next week. Y'all ready? Yes. Y'all got your coins? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> Be, what's, the, what's the website she told you to go becoming to? Becoming Michelle Obama. I told you. And you ain't finding no. Look at this shit. Oh my God. She got the sunlight peeking through her. Oh my her, fe- her, um, her hand. She got her hand rested on her forehead. Her eyelashes are long as the sky. She got a fresh doobie wrap, mm. a fresh blowout. See? And those arms. And that's it. See, you look, pre-order where books are sold. Oh, Amazon. Pre- oh I know a pre-order. Look, let me go here. Let me see where it's at. Oh, you had Bam. to go directly to it. There you go. I need Hard to. Hard cover, $22. Let's go ahead it, and pre-order it. It this. doesn't fucking matter how much it is. Look, it's already number one bestseller. <laughs> this is. <laughs> <laughs> book ain't even out yet, but it's number one bestseller. What are you talking about? <laughs> An African-American black uh, biographies on Amazon. See a bot store selling it. Let's see. <laughs> you see, let me see if my bot store discount. Okay, we're doing a podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, it's at all the box stores, actually. Perfect. Wherever books are sold. You said wherever the hell the books are sold. Let's see here. That's what you said. Let's, let's, let's check it on out. And see what's going on. But y'all get that, Michelle Obama. I know when it comes out, I'm going to read it. Yeah, pre order now. It's going to be. Um, yeah, put your discount code in. I know, I'm putting my discount code all the way in. It's going to be beautiful. The next thing is, you know, changing the tone, I guess, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, R.I.P. to Bill Cosby's daughter. Oh, I think man. it was um, Edsma. That was her name. She passed away and she was in her early to mid 40s. I know she had. A few illnesses and ailments where I think she kidney transplant. Like, mm-hmm. I think she has some serious things going, going on. Um, they haven't released it, you know, publicly or how or why mm-hmm. she passed away, but that's a lot. Yeah. Especially with this trial with um, Bill Cosby about to stir up again, allegedly another month. I'm sure, hopefully, he got an extension so he can have a little time to grieve her daughter because, you know, this is the second child he done lost. Yeah. Because his son died of gun violence, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, Because someone robbed him. I, I hope I'm not getting this story wrong, but I'm pretty sure someone robbed him. But that was in what, the late 90s, early 2000s? Mm-hmm. It, I guess it doesn't matter, right? So he done lost two of his children. So, you know, rest in peace to her and sending love and light to the Cosby family because, you know, that's no joke. I can't imagine how devastating it could be yeah. to lose a child. You know, I, I imagine parents, they, they want to go for their child, right? Right. You know, well, look, here we go, Black Panther. They say, you know, a, a, a father or parents supposed to prepare their child for them not being there. Mm-hmm. But how do you prepare the vice versa, right? You can't. Mm-mm. I think a little piece of you do go, right? Oh, that is sad. Um, and then lastly, I'm just, look, I don't change my whole energy, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Depression is real, y'all. Depression is so real. And I feel like I'm just swimming in, I don't know, I can't shake it off, right? Like, you know, I I don't know if something, depression is something I've I've battled with all my life, but Mm -hmm. I think it's always been something that's in the background for me. I don't think it's never been something that was so, you know, because depression can be crippling, right? So depression can be where folks can't get out of bed, they can't function. But I think I've always been a high-functioning depression. Is is that, am I saying that right? Almost almost making it like an addict, right? Yeah. I think depression is. Got something to do with it, right? It it is an illness, right? Addict is an illness, so... I, I'm just trying to, you know, get back um, balance and in flow because I feel really out of flow, right? I feel mm. 
like not myself. And I think I feel not myself because something that we don't talk about a lot in the community is how depression manifests itself. So I think a lot of times when folks think of depression, they think of not getting out the bed, not not being able to move forward, not working, not being able to smile or laugh. And when you're someone and that someone is myself that have symptoms of depression, but they don't look like the traditional bots mm. of depression, I think it sometimes is hard for people to understand, you know, what it is. And I don't know, moving forward, like I always say it's something that I have when I know I'm going through kind of this cycle or feel like a, a I don't know, the episode of depression coming on. Mm-hmm. Actually, I have this thing of like rage. So for so many years, I never realized like this rage or like lashing out was a symptom of depression, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, like, I'm surrounded by a lot of motherfuckers who don't know what the fuck is going on, right? But I'm really the one who's ticky, ticky, boom, boom, don't know what's going on, right? So really just being aware and owning that, right? So when you're, you're, it's almost like misdirected anger. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about depression a lot, I don't think we talk about rage, right? When you be like, oh, she depressed, you don't be like, oh, that bitch is, like, it's something like she's just mean, right? You see mm. depression kind of this, you just weep away, you don't say nothing, you're sad, you're lethargic. And it's not that, right? So I have to notice when I'm having these kind of, you know, fits of rage. And I don't mean I'm tearing up anything, but you ever just like, just, you'll just want to go off on somebody. Yep. And you're just like, this is done. And just going off on them on levels of, that. that's not equivalent to the actions. Now, don't get me wrong. They probably deserve a little talk back. But the level of talk back you give them is not equivalent. And then a lot of times the person who has a depression, after you do it, you're exhausted, right? You're like, Jesus, that just took so so much out of me because that becomes your outlet. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times for the depression, you know, to kind of, it's a process you have to go through and you need a form of an outlet. And I, I notice sometimes that's kind of that rage and that lashing out is um, is there. Um, also some of the, the symptoms that I'm noticing I'm having again, you know, just to be aware of my cycle. And I don't know if it's y'all out there too. Is decision fatigue, right? So simple shit. Like simple shit. You like, fuck. I, I, on average, what a person makes with almost a hundred simple decisions a day. Yeah. And for someone who's depressed or going through a depressive state, choosing the mustard or mayo is fucking hard. You're like, fuck, I don't know what I want to eat. What I'm gonna eat. And you know, and it tastes to the point of like, Jesus. And I notice it more things in like paying bills like i'm usually someone who's on it paying bills and this month i know i'm petty because i'm waiting to the last possible moment to be like okay i gotta open my excel file i gotta put the you know the confirmation number in okay how much is the bills what do i need to like all those little decisions and those little actions Mm -hmm. although are automated and are you know in place are exhausting they are completely exhausting and the, or something simple as answering emails like i've had emails that just needed a one sentence response that i'm like i cannot write this write a email send or when i get an email in i die <laughs> i'm like who keeps emailing me and it's just nordstrom <laughs> stop emailing me and then lastly you know when i think of my depression i really think i get into like guilt um and the thing is, the guilt is really processed internally, right? Mm-hmm. So it's nothing that's outwardly done, but it's just something that you constantly ruminate on. So I know something I really feel guilty about, or I know I'm really in a depression, depressed state, is when, like, I can't even do simple things. Like, I get guilty from not, like, answering the phone. Because I'm definitely, I think that's one of my stereotypical ones. I isolate. Mm-hmm. I isolate. I don't want to talk to no one. I don't want to be no one around no one. I go to the bot store. I come home. I go to the bot store. I come home. And that is my cycle, right? Because I got to make some coins. I got to keep life moving, right? So, you know, getting past the guilt of not um, returning phone calls. And it's not because you don't even talk to folks. But it's like because you just don't have anything to say. Because to have a conversation is making decisions. (laughs) So I got to decide what I'm going to say. Like, I I caught myself on the way when I was driving home, you know, yesterday from work with my mom. And I was like, damn, I've been declining and ignoring and dodging these calls. Let me go ahead and hit this. And then we got rid of Desi. I'm and I'm depressed about that too, honey. And night, my mom keep bringing it up, and she was like, "Oh," and she just got quiet. Like she said, "I done killed him, right?" <laughs> I said, "He's safe. He, I ain't just open the door and say be free. <laughs> like he ain't outside." And like I had to say the things like, "Well, if you're gonna grieve him right now, that's not something I want to talk about." So I'll let you go. And she like, "Oh, okay, I changed subject." Then she like, "Well, have you talked to so and so?" I said, "I really only talked to the Lord." 
<laughs> she said, oh, she said, you ever talk to any of your friends? I said, no. She said, who you talk to? I said, the Lord. Yeah, that sounds The Lord right. and bot store guest. <laughs> what? Because you ain't lying. But that's why, and she was like, oh. Like, and you know, I just feel how my energy comes off, mm-hmm. right? And that goes back to what lashing out. And calling a thing a thing. And, you know, this needs to get to the point to be like, you know, I'm really going through a really depressive episode right now. So, and I should just be okay with saying that mm-hmm. and moving on, right? Yeah. Because I got to do some work to really feel, feel how to pull myself out of this, right? This this is a deep one. Like, usually I'm able to bounce back, recognize it, and really move forward. But, y'all, this is something new. You know, I just got to be transparent with the podcast. You know, and that's the thing. Like, I'm ha- like, I'm not sad, right? You know, I'm not, you know, to that point. But it's just, it, I'm having moments. And I got to. Work through it. You gotta get through work it, through right? the mania, right? You gotta work through so it. So I won't be manic. One moment happy, one minute. Please don't. Who are you talking to? The Lord. I was in um, what was it? I was in the store because y'all know I got a little something coming up this week, so I need to get a little uh, business casual dress. And it, I was looking at notebooks, and it was all around the Lord. And it was like <laughs> lean unto the Lord, nobody else. I said, "This is what I need." <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> y'all, I gotta prepare as I'm going on this little business interview. Don't. I have to make sure I don't say crafty crackers or oppressors. <laughs> it's just in such in my vocabulary right now that I'm scared I can't answer a question without it. We gonna change crafty crackers to crafty uh, colonizers. Crafty colonizers. <laughs> I like that because you can say that in public. You can say that to their face. You, but I really can't stand a crafty colonizer. <laughs> Trade the fuck mark. <laughs> You hear me? You heard it first. Black love matters. So I don't know, y'all. So that's just me being completely open, transparent, raw, everything. But no, I'm I'm not in the best place, but I'm trying to move forward. Okay. I'm trying to live. So how are you going to do? I don't know. Yeah. That's the real too. I'm sorry. That's why I can't be a namaste blogger. They be like, I'm going to light my sage and do my yoga. Meditate. Shit, when it get too quiet, it get worse. Would you like to take a bath? Like Too like, many choices. I just thought yes well, no. I'm gonna do a salt soak. <laughs> no. Yes and no. No, because I ain't packed. Cause I I I bathe you, baby. I throw that bath bomb in there. I had that Meanwhile, sage. Meanwhile, Neil used more bath bombs than me. I had that sage and incense going with all these essential oils. I'm trying. I know I need to do is it full moon coming up? Maybe that's why. What's the moon in? Is it in Pisces? What is it in? No, I think it is a full moon because I just seen it, it when I come in. It might be a full moon coming. But I don't know. Yeah, like I said, y'all know I'm an open book. Hopefully it can be better tomorrow, a week, a month, six months, a year. I don't know. But I just, uh, am I the only one? <laughs> is there one? <laughs> like a church, right? Today it's a waxing gibbous. It looks full to me. No, it ain't all the way there. Yet. 91% full. Oh, so we getting there. So, oh, March 1st, tomorrow. Yeah. Or two days? Today, well, when they listen to this. Yeah, so March 1st, I knew something was coming. Yeah, it's waxing. It's not All 100%. right, Nims, what's your check-in? I done talked enough. I don't. I probably done told too much. I don't told y'all more than I talk. Well, I don't have no friends up the Lord, so I guess y'all don't know more than the Lord. So, we returned Desi. I'm extremely, I don't know how I feel about it. And Nyambi is taking it very hard. It's the moon. It's the depression. It's because I feel like I threw Desi away like people throw me away. But then we was having a conversation about people pissing on you. And then that's what it, But I, see? Do you want to be pissed on? No, I don't know. Are you asking me a question? <laughs> well, anyways, <laughs> we took Desi away. You know, we had this, this hard discussion. About what we gonna do with the dog, and we just finally came up with a decision, and you know. Not more near, but okay. No, what you mean? Desi was not good for our relationship, but okay. <laughs> he didn't enhance it. Mm. He didn't bring us closer. He bring us further apart. <laughs> Nero wouldn't even sit next to me when Desi was around. That's a lie. Nero, because the Desi like the first day Desi leave, now you on top of me. The first day we get him, Nero basically in the other room. No, that's a lie. Okay. Because you always pick Desi over me. Okay. And you sit and you had that nigga sit on your lap. Okay. I can't beat the dog. I can't sit I can't beat something that's sitting on your lap. Okay. Y'all see what I'm talking about? So he's gone. Oh, Hopefully he's gone to a white family. A white family that lets him lick them in the face. 
sleep in the bed with them, you know. Hope all his dreams come true. All of his dreams. He hope he never got to get in a cage again. So. I'm disappointed. Yeah, I know you better. It's a little sad giving him away. Okay, Nerum, it's not helping. I was. Why did you keep him? Because I didn't feel that sad. I just feel a Oh, sad. what's the levels of sad? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I felt sad, but I, I knew it was the best decision for the dog and us. I still don't know, but yeah. You don't think so? I don't know. Oh. I really can't. I can't. Mm. I can't um, see through it. Mm-hmm. Why do you think it was the best decision? Um, A for our lifestyle. I start ruminating when I was at work of what Desi would be like in five years. <laughs> what? I was like, I wonder what Desi would have been in five years. I think our lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you know, he could have been trained up, but it probably would have took him six months to a year. Yeah. And I don't know if we had that. We and was then already B, a month in. And B, um, our lifestyle, like both of us get uh, erratic hours. Like for the days I do go to work. I hate that, yeah. It's erratic. And the same with you. Like you used to have been off at four. You can get home to about eight. Yeah. So like with that and training him and not being comfortable to leave him around the house You're by not. himself. Well, I wasn't. Okay. Having him around the house by himself, it just didn't work out. Mm-hmm. So he went back. I hope he go to a good family. He is. What if he go to a bad family? What's a bad family? Any worst fa- to us. Any family that feeds him, walks him, I think it's a good family. What if they don't? Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what if they go to a family and keep him locked up all the time? Oh, my God. This is too much. It's too much pressure. Stop beating yourself up. I wish you could have fostered. I'm sorry you asked you, like, could we foster one? Mm-hmm. And, like, we be petty. Like, we be like, well, can we have a visit? You know, now I see why white people can we visit your home <laughs> <laughs> I'm like damn no home I own this house what do you mean I can see it was like renting right I own this home my name is on here what do you mean all this is mine but now I say white people can we have a visit no you can't, can't just, like DCF house. can we just pop in can we just pop now in now we Peter right. can we just pop in to see so where would his living arrangements be mm-hmm. it's almost like Chris Rock uh, can you show us the bed where he gonna be sleeping at <laughs> Can you uh, show us the uh, pantry of dog food yes. where he would be you, eating that? Can you sh- yes. Because <laughs> when you say they were surprised when we gave him all his stuff, Desi went back with a suitcase. Sh- nigga sure did. Sh- huh. Nigga had all types of shit. Brushes, combs, flea medicine, dog outfits. food, leashes, outfits, everything. They bet not gave it to the other dogs. They probably did. You know how that stuff go. They don't, all that don't go to one dog. They split that shit up. <laughs> dog food. You think the dead dogs be looking at him, your back, nigga. <laughs> dog <laughs> food. They take all that shit from the uh, dog. Oh, and it was dog good food, dog food, too. And they just mix all that shit up. That was good organic dog food. Mm-hmm. So, um, what did you think that. he thought that first night? I don't know. I try not to think about those things. Oh, my God. If you help my depression. Oh, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, baby. Well, yeah. well, what would you like to talk about? I don't know what you thought about. What? I don't know what he thought about. Uh-huh. It, what's the difference? His ass was in the cage at night. <laughs> to him, <laughs> the oppressor is the oppressor. It's like black people. Oppressed, a oppressed. white oppressor. An Italian is the oppressor. A ger- a pre- all oppressed. Mm. <laughs> all right, Nero. Go ahead. So, yeah, got him back. And then, you know, I was like, fuck, man, I'm going to take this shit hard. So, you know me, I'm trying to get away, get rid of any rem- resemblance of a dog in the house. Mm-hmm. Cages, dog bowls, everything we didn't give away, gone. Oh, I just looked at his dog food bowl. Fuck. I thought I got that rid of. Mm-hmm. All that shit Still gone. Water in it. No, I ain't got no water Jesus. in it. All that shit gone, mm-hmm. except for this dog bowl. I don't have me looking at Because I was like, now nah, I'm going to take this shit hard. So I need to just poof. Ain't no dog here. You never had a dog. Fit me into your imagination. Dream. Mm-hmm. Now mm-hmm. came home. Sick with it. Uh, what else? I went to the doctors. You know, you know, you niggas get thirty. Y'all ass got to take care of yourself and shit like that. So niggas go get physical and shit. Go have the niggas grab your balls and cough. And take shit. your blood. Take your blood and shit like take that. Take your blood pressure, Neil. So, I think I might have a high blood pressure, y'all. Mm-hmm. The doctor. So. So this is the same day I didn't take take Daddy to the damn um, shelter. Then I go get go to the doctor's. <laughs> blood pressure high as fuck. I think it's a study that said dogs lower dog blood pressure. That nigga ain't lower shit. 
Because you're so angry around him. I'm not angry around him. Mm. I'm never angry. My blood pressure is high as hell. Mm. I think it's because of you. Me? Yes, you. What have I done? (laughs) You're a stressing individual. Okay. You're stressing me out. Meanwhile, my blood pressure be low. I know. So they didn't sit my ass I know my blood pressure be near. It was pretty damn low. So they sent my ass home with a blood pressure cuff, and I got to take my blood pressure twice a day for the next seven days, and then take it back, and they gonna take my other blood pressure. Just like, oh, your blood pressure really high. And first of all, my blood pressure is never high. Like, yeah, it's almost on the low end. Oh, your blood pressure is really high. Um, well, you know, we can't prescribe you anything because it's just one reading, but we got something for that. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you can't give me shit right now, ho. Uh-huh. And then it's like, oh, I think I'm safe and shit. And here comes the ass with this damn blood pressure cuff. White ass New England. <laughs> Hello, Nero. Yeah. Take this with you. <laughs> I would like you to take your blood pressure in the morning and at night and write it down. Meanwhile, y'all know I'm big as fuck. I'm like 6'2". Some my pounds. Well, fucking blood pressure cuff. I don't fit around my arm. So I got to take blood pressure around my, uh, around my wrist. Uh- <laughs> Wrong Why did you tell me to buy a bigger blood pressure cuff at the box? I'm not. I'm not buying no shit just. Nigga, for this some is shit. your life. Invest in your fucking I'm self. I'm not buying no blood pressure cuff just to use it for a week. Okay. So I'm just doing this shit around my arm and my two fingers. So how do you know that? A- I don't. Okay. I don't. And I was trying to tell them that, but they was like, "Well." I said, well. They said they got one for you, nigga. <laughs> That's what they said. So, niggas, take care of yourself. Y'all gonna have you take care of yourself. Blood, high blood pressure. So, what are you doing to alleviate this? Well, Because it of can all, be reversible. We're at the stage where it's Well, first of all, my blood pressure has been going down since. Oh, since that. But is it still high? It's relatively high. But okay. it's, it's going down. I ain't know what to do. Shit, stop eating salty food, drink more water, exercise. How are we in the same household? Hmm? Our blood pressure is like 360. I don't know. Because you don't eat shit. I, I, you be at the box door eating trash and you only eat once a day. Shut up. Now, I'm the type of person, I'm, oh, I'm going to eat a bag of chips. <laughs> Nigga, that's all you eat the whole day? Okay. Shut up. I don't do that. <laughs> so, I'll keep y'all up to, up to date on that. I should know something about Monday. Ep- no, probably Wednesday episode. I should know and, something. Uh, here you go again. Um, ladies, gentlemen, you got to get with your partner. He wasn't even going to make this appointment. If I, this is that. Remember a few weeks ago, I said I've had to make an appointment. Because he went to that thing for his foot. And the doctor was like, no, ma'am. I had the flu. You know what? This what? Ru- this month has been a rough month. I had the flu twice for the whole month. You falling to pieces. I you know. You should have petted Desi more. Shh. Girl, bye. I petted that dog more than you. Oh, thanks, man. You're welcome. Um, so moving on. This episode getting long. Uh, <laughs> Shut up. Uh, moving on. Have y'all heard that the Set It Off got a stage play coming out? Yes, and I'm not for it. You're not for Absolutely it? Absolutely not. It's going to have a Brad. Oh, my God. Latoya Luckett. No. Demetria McKinney. Jesus. And Kyla Pratt. No. What about that sounds interesting? It sounds interesting to me. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to make sure we're on the same story. Set It Off with Queen Latifah. Yeah. And Jada Pegasus, Smith. Vivica Fox. And who was the last one? Um, Elise, the hollering ass woman. Yeah. That movie of classic black women who robbed that bank. Yep. Is okay. going to be a stage play. Yep. With the Brad, Latoya Luckett, Demetri McKinley, and Kyla Pratt. What? Nothing about that sounds good. Let me guess who's going to play who. The Brat going to play Queen Latifah. Yep. Um, Demetria McKinley is gonna play the collar one, mm-hmm. the one who was at least Nielsen. I think that's okay. Right. Um, Kyla gonna play Jada and Latoya gonna play Vivica. Okay. No, is am I right? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but if I had to put money on it, I'll put money on that. What? Are you, what the fuck? Y'all excited about this shit? It doesn't even make sense. How do you do that in a stage play? Like, they're just going to have boxes to signify windows. and Like, think of the iconic scenes they have in that movie. How I know, do you like her on the bus. On the yeah, I don't know. Like, she going to be on a bus? They going to have a cardboard cut out of a bus? Probably. Oh, my God. Or is it going to be one of them real stream down plays where it just be a chair? <laughs> You know, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It'd just be a chair and it'd be, Paula Popper did it a little bit too. It'd just be a chair and a blanket. 
You, you know, the color purple used those chairs for everything. They used thing. a chair and a blanket for everything. The blanket <laughs> was a child. Um, it was a baby. It was a tablecloth. It was a dress. It was the um. It was flowers. Stop it! You make my blood what, pressure go up. What? <laughs> That's what they gonna do for set it off. Probably. Who knows? I don't think it's a musical though. Oh shit! I ain't put. <laughs> It doesn't matter. St- still, what you gonna do? I guess. I guess I could think. Keep thinking about musicals. I don't. I'm trying to think of one play I see wasn't a musical. What play you seen that haven't been a musical? How this ain't gonna have no music? So they just gonna play the backtrack? I don't know. They just gonna play in vogue? Oh Jesus! This is getting worse and worse. Okay. God damn. I'd rather them do a remake. Where they're trying to remake everything. Speaking of. Near, okay, will you tell me what brings joy to you about this? Yo, you took it away. So no, well, tell me what brings joy. What nope. about this? No, nope. help me. To, I'm seeking to understand. What about a uh, stage play of Set It Off? That's just like that dumbass Love Jones. Actually, Love Jones had better options than this. My blood pressure is rising, so I'm going to go to Oprah. Near him. I'm what? asking you a question. What about that? Uh, it just seems thing? interesting. You know, a little nostalgia. Well, if it, well, let's go. Get the tickets. Okay. I bet $30 that it don't make it. What do you consider success? No, I mean, never come to fruition. (laughs) (laughs) What you mean? I mean, just it dissolves. I've seen the poster. That's fine. But are they playing live? Yes. What's the date? What's the opening date? I bet they don't make it there. Ooh. What? Ooh, you mad Joe Button right now. I ain't mad Joe Button. I'm mad the truth. Look at this. Um, oh, you know, it's a Jacarius Johnson prevents set it off. Yep. Nah. It ain't, nah. Yeah, look, it's on Ticketmaster.com. Look. Near them. When is the date? They going to be in Atlanta, March 9th. All right, March 9th. We'll see if it happens. They're going to be in Atlanta at 10. Are they coming anywhere near with white-ass New England? They're going to be in D.C. March 16th. Okay, keep scrolling. White-ass New England. Anywhere near. D.C., D.C. They're going to be in Houston. 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 Come on, near them. Hold on. Shit. Detroit? They're going to be in Detroit. Where are they going to be in Detroit? We might have to ease on today. Where are they going to be at Detroit? April 21st. Oh, at the music hall? Mm-hmm. Uh, Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. L.A. They done skipped over New England. It they done sure went to D.C. Did. and jumped to the Midwest. <laughs> They said, "Don't come near the white at the black, um, black New Englands." Mm-hmm. Oh, look at them hairstyles! Look. I looking at this hairstyle. The brat looked the same. Hell, the brat ain't age. The brat looking. I said the brat just looked like her. Is she playing her? No. Oh, she's she playing Queen Latifah, baby. How you know? I don't know. I'm just guessing. Assume me. Hell, hold on. Two more days. Okay, what's the two more days? L.A. L.A. Anything else now? What you say going on with Queen Oprah? Well, you know, Queen Oprah been having these interviews because, you know, Wrinkle of Time is coming out. Yeah, we got to make sure we go see that. That's coming out what? Soon. March. 12th or 10th. We're going. March. I'm going to figure out. No, it's March 9th because it's the day Biggie died. That's oh, the day I remember. Right yeah, Biggie died on March 9th. I want to go see an open weekend just like I seen T'Challa. Okay. Well, let's do and the I, I honestly think I want to pay them coins, too, and see it on, like, IMAX because, you mm-hmm. know, all the colors. and Yeah. It might be lit. Yeah, I'm going to have to put in my contact so we see a 3D. Oh my God. Yeah, want, that might be a good one. I want Oprah, all type of, all the, all the Oprah bling popping all in my eyes. From and all my eyebrows? Yeah. Honestly, I need to go re, um, skim through some cheater notes on A Wrinkle in Time. I ain't read A Wrinkle in Time since 8th grade. Oh, I never read A Wrinkle in Time. Oh, you never read A Wrinkle in Time? No. Baby, I was a black boy in the Nigga, hood of Detroit. that's literature. You, have you ever read The Great Gatsby? No. Beowulf? I read The Beowulf. Odyssey? No. Catcher in the Rye? No. One Who Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? No. What did y'all niggas read? We didn't read. I told y'all you. Did, y'all did, okay. Put that on the record for DPS. <laughs> so y'all niggas didn't open one American we book. We had Beowulf, but it wasn't in the book. It was like sheets. We had that oh one God. that one story I told you. Uh, yeah, that the four lottery. pager. I still yep. haven't read that. We had that one. That's what we had. You know, Detroit didn't have no money. It wasn't about, our books was raggedy. Well, we didn't have no books. We had printouts. <laughs> I think we did the Odyssey on the printout. Niggas stole books. We did the Odyssey on the printout where to the point where the teacher assigned roles. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, you Homer. 
I this who you are. It was homeless. I don't see. Oh, was it something? Something leads under the sea. Never Little seen. women. Nope. What? You missing out some American classics? Yeah, I didn't read. I didn't get the reading. Fahrenheit but... was it four fifty one? Nope. Catch twenty two or catch twenty one? No. Nope. What's the one with the um the pig talking pig? Animal Farm. Yeah. Yep. Lord um, of the Flies. I think I remember reading that shit. Which one? Lord of the Flies. One of them kids on the island. Yeah, and they were trying to kill each other. Yeah, and like the that. Head, yeah, and the pig on the snake. Yeah, it's basically yeah. the Trump presidency. And they had like a talking stick or something like that. Yeah, it's basically now, 45 yeah. and now. Okay, so Oprah had, uh, she was talking about like negative energy. And she's like, yeah. you know, you know, with this whole Trump Monique stuff, I'm not going to respond to it because, you know, you can't meet, <gasps> you can't meet negative with negative because you know it. Oh, so, so you agree it's negative. But that, look, me, this is me to interview. So, Queen Oprah, you agree <laughs> it is negative because you have nothing positive to say? You can't meet negative with a negative. She's like, you know, when negative energy and negative energy get together and convulsed into like something big, a negative storm. And I said, okay. So, so you, look, this is me. So, look, like I'm writing for Boss Up. So you have nothing positive to say. So she said, you know, you got to rise above it. So you have nothing positive to say. And then she's like, you know, when energy is not created nor destroyed, it's only passed from one party to the next. And she just decides not to participate in it. She this just, is me. Say something nice about Monique Oprah. This is me. Her hair is pretty. I absorb that energy. What? That's what she said? She just says she rises above it. And then, you know. I'm definitely not mature enough for that. This is what she, okay, I pretend I'd be Oprah. Ask me about Monique. Ask me about the story. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, Oprah, what do you think about Monique and uh, Trump talking about shit about you? Who? Oh, who? the president. Who? Trump. I'm not familiar. <laughs> do you know who the president is? <laughs> of me? America. Obama. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Okay. What do you mean you can't? What, can't. what, what, what you can't about? Who? <laughs> now, I believe in Woody Williams. Who? Anyways, what I was getting with this is that, you know. She right, though, to a certain extent. But I think by her being like, I don't got shit to say, she would have been better off saying, I don't have nothing to say. Instead of saying negative energy, negative energy. So, Queen Oprah, you basically said, yeah, that whatever that bitch said was right. True. <clears throat> we ain't cool. What I was getting with this. Okay. But I see Naomi's on that negative energy. I'm not on negative energy. Is that, y'all, Who? you know, the, the quarter is almost up. First quarter is almost Jesus. up. Jesus. We got a full moon ahead of us. The, the you know, we done had all types of eclipses and all types of shit. Don't let that hurt, shame, and defeat, and negative energy and despair, despair get you, get you. Despair is a new one. Y'all gotta y'all gotta rise above it. I don't know what that means. Despair. No, nigga, I know what despair means. Oh. I mean, you can get the definition. Um, when people sometimes when folks say rise above, that doesn't mean be quiet. <laughs> don't be petty. Keep it cute, sis. It means practice self care. I mean, self care. Can we talk about rich people self care? Okay, I near. I know this is your check in. Mm-hmm. Why was I watching? Uh, was it Deuce and Meryl? Deuce and Meryl. Oh, I'm sorry. What did I say? Deuce and Meryl. <laughs> <laughs> nigga named Deuces. <laughs> we tried to get on their show. What did exactly. I say? Look, you over here fucking his name up. What did I say? <laughs> Deuce. Deuce, you a funny <laughs> motherfucker. Oh, what's your name? <laughs> he gonna be like, who the fuck is Deuce? <laughs> nigga, you. You act like you don't know who the fuck you is. Deuce. He, act, he uh, you know what? He be acting like his name is common, cause I think he do correct a lot of people. It's because Jesus. it's Jesus, it's it's like Jesus, but with a D. Nigga, that is not easy to say. It's not Especially easy to for say. Christians who love the Lord. It's not easy to say Jesus. Most of y'all niggas Jesus? got most of y'all niggas got speaking impediment, so y'all probably already say Jesus. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus the Lord. Jesus well. The Lord, Jesus well. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus well. <laughs> so. <laughs> Don't be giving that man a hard time with I'm his I'm not name. giving him a hard time, but shit, he act like he, his name is John. I'm just saying. It, it, it's, Deces? Yes. Deces and Meryl. Yes. Deces is the brown skin one, right? Yeah, he's the Jamaican guy. Oh, he's Jamaican? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Jesus. What is the Meryl is? Uh, he's Dominican. Dominican. Yeah. Anyway, I was watching them, mm-hmm. or Niran was watching them, and they had the thing where Bill Gates was on there. Oh yeah, <laughs> and they was like, "Guess the how much he worth? How much I think Bill Gates worth?" <laughs> I said, "I said fifty billion." Niran, uh-huh. what you say? I said about uh, about sixty seventy billion. And they came on and hit the screen and said that motherfucker's worth ninety one billion fucking dollars. And me, Niran, Jesus, and Mira was like, "Fuck!" 
Like we all, <laughs> all the, the poor jumped out of us. <laughs> it was like, Jesus, $91 billion? Yep. What the fuck is going on? And then it was that other motherfucker that's worth $121 billion fucking dollars. Mm-hmm. And he over here, no, and um, what is it? An Old Navy Best. And then they said it was a, when he had a Balenciaga belt on, and <laughs> yeah. we just couldn't see it. Or <laughs> Ferragamo. Ferragamo. <laughs> Talking about where his Ferragamo belt at. <laughs> niggas can just be a thousand there with a Ferragamo. <laughs> <laughs> niggas ain't got rent paid and got Ferragamo. Ferragamo belt on. Bill Gates worth billions. <laughs> and we're in the, oh, actually, I ain't gonna do him. He upgraded Old Navy. Banana um, Republic. Finest. <laughs> Not like Banana Republic. No, nah, that nigga probably wearing Brooks Brothers. Shit, that's still. I know. 91 billion fucking dollars. What the hell am I doing over here? Sleep? Ah, well, yeah, we need to get that merch together. All right. I'm sorry. Sorry, Deuce. I mean, Jesus. God. Jesus. And my Jesus. other thing, speaking about rich people and problems and shit, Will and Jaden Smith is about to sell water. Is this with the Puff Daddy, too? I think so. Is this the alkaline water? Yes. Niggas, and al- <laughs> Niggas don't y'all go out there and buy this. If you do not got your emergency savings, savings and checking, and your vacation money set aside, do not go out and buy this water. Just add lemon to your water. Alkaline. I was about to get this alkaline water filter. It got like rocks and shit. Nigga, just add lemon to your water. Do you realize lemon alkalines your water? Or any citrus can alkaline your water? What's but, wrong with y'all niggas? But I need it to be to the right. Y'all niggas eat Popeyes. <laughs> and you talking about you want your water alkaline. Yes, I need to be properly alkaline. Y'all niggas gonna cut up them cheap ass lemons like, from the box store and like open a, them water. Like a Cynthia. What Ooh. Cynthia is? That alkaline water. It's like 0.9. Yeah. That's what I need. With the pH. Buy yeah. some. Well, go to Amazon and buy some pH strips. And then you keep squeezing the lemon to the pH match. That's much cheaper than any of this water going to cost you. Look, I need it to be 9.5 pH ionized. Like Essentia. I can't with y'all niggas. And, um, I mean, I'm here to support. And Diddy's alkaline water. Will, Diddy, and all of them. I probably just buy it when I'm at the airport. But I can't add it to my grocery list. It ain't going next to the grits. Well, Trader Joe's alkaline water is the best. Actually, yeah, and it's a good price, too. Yeah. You are so silly. Baby. You got lit, didn't you? <laughs> yes. I got lit. No, because it reminded me of some shit. So, um, so two chains got a show on Vice too. Vice Vice Land is like one of my favorite TV yeah, shows. Yeah, like channels. Yeah, channels. You know what I'm trying to say. Vice Land. Uh, so he has a like TV show called Most Expensive. Oh, Spensivist. Yeah, please, Most please put respect on that name. So, uh, one episode, need this to nigga. Change. Naomi need to co host it with them. This nigga uh, went somewhere and somebody sold him or showed him the, the most expensive uh, can of air. Stop. And the motherfucker was like, We went to the Alps. And it's huh? like, Nigga, how do you can air? You can't. Talking about we went to the Alps and got like this uh, sealed <laughs> vacuum cleaner and, and sucked the air out. And then we went to a canning facility and hand canned the air. No. How much was it? Like, ten dollars? No, it was expensive. It was like a thousand. What? Like and so, what you just put it on your face? Yeah, like, like you, an aerosol container. Yeah, and you just spray it, and you squirt it, and you spray it in your face. It's, you supposed, the, it's some cocaine in there. It, you supposed to sniff the the Alps or like Asia or shit, some shit like that. Powder. Is it cocaine? No, it's just Coca- air. Got to be cocaine. It's just air. <laughs> Airlines cocaine. So aerosol co- cocaine. You never know what because niggas out here. For aerosol containers at the bus store, we got to scan people ID. <laughs> what? <laughs> Because <laughs> niggas huffing again, huffing his back. <laughs> That's what y'all niggas doing on Vice Land with that can air. That's why everybody's so fucking high. Niggas is huffing again? Yeah, we scan IDs, and I'm particular. <laughs> and they be old and white. I'm like, I need your ID. Like, I'm old enough. I said, ma'am, it's not an age thing. It's an amount thing. Oh. There's no age, I was like, there's no age to the drug game. Damn. I learn something new every day. You ain't know that? I didn't know huffing was back, I guess. You Something's back. So any aerosol sub air freshener we scan for. Really? So spray paint. Um, You know that what you use to clean your keyboards with? Uh-huh. Oh, that's limited. That liquid air? Yeah, honey. You only getting two cans of that at the box store. Yeah, I uh, fucking around. I got freezer burnt with that shit before. Somebody has, I was an undergrad. Somebody sprayed me on my arm. Okay, Nero. Yeah, third degree freezer burn. Last funny thing did you see talking about rich people. They was talking about Wakanda. And it was some black guy. I forgot who it was. 
ah, I want to think of his name, but he was doing a thing on how the black, the state black people live in now is better than Wakanda, or Wakanda never can be the best because Wakanda had no, no Popeyes. Popeyes. <laughs> and not only Popeyes, he broke up a good a big point. There was no eating. In this entire movie. <laughs> Ain't nobody. And that is not a part of black civil rights culture. <laughs> black civil rights culture needs food. They have no, what y'all be eating in Africa? Jollof rice? I don't know. None else y'all eat besides jollof rice. I don't know. What are some African cuisines? Pinto beans. Nigga, I think that's oh. civil rights black slash Latino. Okay. I don't really think that's an African. Black, black eyed peas. Yeah. Yams. Yams. What else? Uh, and rice, jollof rice. I can't think of no other signature. And jar bread. Yeah, it's Ethiopia. I don't think oh. we. I don't think Wakanda in that part of Africa. Oh. Do better. All right, Nero. Sorry. Come on. Uh, we got a black love story. Of course, we got a black love story. So as always, if you want to submit your black love story, um, go to blacklovematters.com. You'll see a tab that says submit your black love story and go ahead and submit it. Uh, this week's black love story is from Preston and Felicia who have been together since May of 1998. That's a whole 19 years. Why you say it like that? That's a whole. That's a whole well, You know, that's a lot now. Years. That's a lot now. Because now it looks like something happened at the 20, 25 year mark. Niggas saying, fuck it. <laughs> look, <laughs> they've been together two years after I ain't had no joy. So I didn't, had, I, I didn't have joy for two years before they even got together. Oh, my God. How did you first meet? <laughs> they said we met in high school and I randomly asked her to prom while she was signing my yearbook. And even though she was completely shocked, um, she said yes. It was my first time ever speaking to her. It must have been some type of divine intervention. Hold the hell up, Preston. You ain't never spoke to her. Yeah, this nigga hey. a lie. He been writing in his journal. You know, with your notebook with the hearts. He done did MASH. You know, mansion, apartment, shack house. Oh. He done put her name. <laughs> On all the girls' names. <laughs> he done manifest this. What's that, the little thing with the hands? Coochie catcher. Coochie catcher. You, no, not coochie. When you, cootie. Be, oh, when you got the hands, you put your fingers in both of them, you yeah, the open coochie it back and forth? Yeah, the coochie, not coochie. Oh. Coochie catcher. Oh. That's what it's called. I think it is. I ain't know what the fuck that shit a was called. A coochie catcher, because it's supposed to be a coochie catcher. Because it's like, oh, y'all can't see. I'm, oh, over uh, here. <laughs> I'm over here opening and folding my hand, going back and forth. This ain't <laughs> one day one day we're gonna get the coins together and have a Look, live stream edit it put up the coochie catcher i mean the cootie catcher i can say the coochie catcher i don't know <laughs> censor we already censored our own <laughs> retake retake <laughs> what is it called uh cootie catcher uh a pickup uh-huh. <laughs> we gotta do a pick pickup up on, on that <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, i'm tired of these pickups yep. <laughs> i ain't doing no more pickups <laughs> No, I'm use queen open words. I don't want no negativity. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I think he a lie. I think he been manifesting this. You think he been manifesting this? Absolutely. His? Well, he say they ain't the first Aaron, time he spoke. Think about when you were in high school. Invited the girl. To, did you? First of all, did you invite a girl to prom? Did you go to prom with someone? Yeah, I went to prom with somebody. Did Did it ever cross your mind to ask that part? Like, was it a priority? Like, was it something you just woke up like, oh, prom next week? Let me get ready. No. So it was agreed upon. Oh, it was like a girlfriend. Yeah. Okay. Well, somebody I was kicking it with. Oh, I'm so, I don't think she coming for you now, Nero. Situationship. So as a male, you think you would just ask a girl off her rip if you weren't feeling her a little bit already? Nah. Weren't drawing hearts already? No. Nah. Preston was feeling you, girl. And she said yes. She my type what? of bitch. Because I say yes too, just to see. Yeah. You got what to. did it be, right? Mm-hmm. My prime, I didn't go with anyone. And I think that's why I just broke up with one of my boyfriends. Actually, I went to prom with a group of people. Mm-hmm. It was like five of us. Shout out to, um, I ain't going to relieve his name, but we rented a big Yukon Denali, mm-hmm. and we drove in downtown Detroit, and we cut the fuck up. Y'all, we might have told the stories already. Y'all, it's the, it's the um, I don't know if they're crackheads or the homeless people still down there who be in a wheelchair. And I think he was a war vet. Now that I'm older and a little bit more mature, he kept like, we was at the stoplight and it was silent on the street. And he just rolled out the depths of the shadows. <laughs> in his wheelchair? Yes. <laughs> and he came to the stoplight and he was screaming at that truck. He was like, you niggas! And then the first I was driving, oh, shut your ass up. <laughs> like, it was just a ridiculous <laughs> night. Uh-huh. And then we went to the Wendy's drive through and... <laughs> No problem. I ain't gonna say the rest of the story, but we oh. went through. Do y'all remember we going through that Wendy's drive through? All I say was we got free food. Oh, what y'all do? We treated it like almost like a sets operator thing. I was like, "Hello, can I get a junior bacon?" 
And we put up to the window. Of course, there's young black people working there, mm-hmm. too. And they're like, what's up? And we was like, well, give me this burger. We'll give you my number. And we just took the burger and ran. Uh-oh. Typical niggas. <laughs> <clears throat> but they said it was divine intervention. I yeah, it was a lot divine. of things do be in a divine intervention. So. Mm-hmm. Next, it says, when did each of you know your partner was the one? It says, during our second year of undergrad, we managed to keep our relationship strong while attending two different universities. So that is really hard. Mm, that is. Um, we only seen each other during the weekends, and our first semester of college tested us, but we sustained. That is. I know. Going that, to the same one be hard. All that new cream shit. What? Ass first of all, you you're ain't... old. No one says that. <laughs> cream. Actually, cream, that sounds like STD. <laughs> STIs. The kids have STIs now, not Ds. That's what the, that's what the fresh used to say back in there. Where the cream at, nigga? Oh my god! So I said, so oh, okay. So it's hard to do under. Yeah, I, I go back and forth. Like I think have, being in a committed relationship in undergrad, I think that's an experience with it itself. Mm-hmm. Um, but also being single in undergrad is an experience with it itself. Yeah. And I go back and forth with. I guess this one's not the best. I guess as long as you embrace. As long as you enjoy it. Yeah, as long as you enjoy it. If any moment you're not enjoying it, it's miserable, it's not. Because I think having someone you can really trust and roll with during undergrad, especially during those later years, are key. Mm-hmm. I love that. Where y'all go? I always like to know that, too. Mm-hmm. Next, is, what's the key to the success of your relationship? It says, we don't lie intentionally to each other. Come on with that intentionally. We're going to have to unpack that. Intentionally to each other. Also, we make big decisions together and constantly date each other. I think we are lu- um, we are lucky to start dating with just the general interest of liking each other. We found each other before knowing what we liked or disliked, making it easy um, task to grow together. Mm. Thoughts on that, Nerms? Yeah, you know. Did he say yeah? Don't be a lying ass nigga. Well, or intentionally be a lying ass nigga. Yeah, because sometimes you do I don't know if lie the right word, but some stuff I don't tell them. I said, oh, I did say that. Yeah. I ain't even me. Naomi has a knack for breaking shit and then be like trying to hide it. Yeah. So I don't lie about it, but <clears throat> I ain't up front about it. I say, Naomi, where my such and such at? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. For it. I don't know where is that. Me, check the trash. That's my good line. That's how you know I broke it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nia, what'd you say when I do that? <clears throat> I'm like, check the trash. Sometimes I don't even ask no more because that's like Naomi done broke it. Uh, but yeah, making big decisions together. I, I, I think to. You know, I don't see how folks in relationship don't. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see how that happened. Constantly dating each other. You gotta. Huge. You gotta Huge. keep it spicy. You gotta date each other. You gotta keep interest and keep each other interested and things of that sort. Uh, yeah. And then, like you know, generally liking each other. I think you know that goes back to like you know being friends. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Uh, but being friends, but also just. Journey liking each other other than like I want to fuck. Yeah, it's got to be more than that. Because you know, some people they get in relationships like, oh, I like her, I want to fuck her, and then like, oh, we in a relationship, and I ain't got nothing in common. Only thing they do is just we fucking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that ain't enough. Mm-hmm. Um, next it says, what advice would you give young married couples? It says communication is key. Sometimes the truth is fain- painful, but you have to be receptive to constructive criticism in order to have a strong relationship. People do not reiterate how much how painful the truth can be, mm-hmm. especially coming from your partner. I agree. And also that constructive criticism. Like, how do you really, how do you, how do, how do you give it, right? Mm-hmm. Then how do you also receive it? Sometimes I think it's harder to give than to receive it. Yeah. What do you think? Like, I, I, I could swallow it easier if you say it, but for me to kind of get my mind right, get courageous enough to come to you to be like, this is what it is. Yeah. It can be hard. Because sometimes you're like, nigga, spit it out. Yeah. Because you can tell. Yeah. No, like, period. Like, when you're dealing with, like, constructive criticism, whether it's your partner, um, or mainly when it's your partner, it's like, sometimes they be tiptoeing, and you're like, just say what you got to say so I can get mad and we can get over it. You said so I can get mad? <laughs> Why you say you already know that's coming? Because <laughs> I know you're going to say something that's going to piss me off, so let's go ahead and do it. The quicker you can say it, the quicker I can get pissed off and get over it. Yeah. How do you give me constructive criticism, Neil? Um, I think I'm a little bit more um, forthright with yeah. you than you. Because, you know, there's been some times you're like, you hurt my feelings. Like, what? Like, I'm just speaking the, speaking the truth. Mm. And then you get mad at me. I said, hold up now. True. Did I not say what's wrong? Fine. As Nia say, turn on the GPS <laughs> and show me what a lie is. Yeah. But y'all have to realize people are behind mm. that. I get it. 
And lastly, anything else you want to tell us about your love story? It says, my wife and I learned we will not be able to have children, and it was taxing, but because we have a solid base, the mourning period was less than a week, and it was back to business as usual, and we're looking to adopt a child in the near future. We spend most of our youth traveling the world and learning the meaning of life, and would love to pass that knowledge on. That's beautiful, right? That is. What's up? We, we, don't have, we haven't had an episode. I guess we got to have our conversation about kids. Mm-hmm. I think that's a multifaceted conversation so the good bad the ugly folks who've tried to have kids and maybe can't have kids adoption losing children Mm -hmm. you know how that affects the dynamics of relationships because i think it does absolutely and you know as a parent how do you situate yourself or just as two brown people in love how do you present yourself for when you're just around children right Mm -hmm. because it don't have to be your kids for them to take note and to learn and to be around you so that's great. Thank y'all so much for sharing your love story, um, Preston and Felicia. It was beautiful. Yeah, it was us, man. Check it I out. I want to know where y'all went. Where y'all go? Yeah, well, undergrad y'all go to. Mm-hmm. Pillow Talk near Yeah, what we got? Can we talk about Safari eggplant? No, we can't. Why? I didn't watch it, y'all. You looked at his eggplant. You can I didn't. Through. I didn't. I don't want to get a virus. <laughs> 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 what you mean? I don't want to get a virus on my computer. <laughs> what you thought I said? Did you watch it? No. Oh, shit. No, I did not well, watch it. Well, from trusted sources, uh-huh. I can say that he was he lives up to the Wakanda um, tradition Okay. of black men. More power to him. What do you mean more power to more him? More power to him, shit. All right, I really don't want to talk about his eggplant, although I heard it was very impressive. But that don't surprise me, because niggas like that. That's how I be. Mm-hmm. L- ladies, gentlemen, how you doing? Y'all know what I'm talking about. I be that same nigga. You be like, him? Of all people? Jesus, take it out, hit the ground. <laughs> what? Take it out, hit, hit the, the ground. ground. He'd be the ones you least me. Like, can't be. And the, ain't he from Jamaica? Yeah. You know, Jamaican men already pride themselves, honey, mm-hmm. in um, having something that's not of God. <laughs> what? 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 You never heard that saying? Hey, no, not of God. no, it's I not have of God. never it's heard not, that. It's not of God. Oh, okay. Anything else you want to talk make about? Make you do things. That are not godly. Anything else? Yeah. About so the bigger pe- don't rush me. Okay, I'm sorry. Let, go Eric, ahead. Don't be insecure about eggplants. I'm not insecure about eggplants. I got the problem? one. Nothing. Would you show your eggplant? For how much money? Okay, so far. First of all, do you think he leaked it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Knowing if this is the same nigga we're talking about who's on love and hip hop with furs and coconut oil every day, yes. Yeah, I can see that. Maybe if this nigga three years ago that was with Nicki Minaj, I say somebody did him wrong. Mm-hmm. But um, this nigga today, he probably leaked it and laughed. <laughs> he probably did it by mistake though. Oops, <laughs> it's live. Right. You know, it started with a Snapchat. He's trying to Snapchat somebody. <laughs> Juju. And then <laughs> you know how you pick a person, yeah. or you can send it to everybody. It the world, and, you know those buttons be too damn close. And you, next thing you know, you hit everybody. Fuck! <laughs> it's leaked. It's leaked. <laughs> Mona, <laughs> who's this Mona, I did something. I got a storyline. I got a storyline. <laughs> My eggplant is out there. But what I wanted to compare this to was kind of the Black China leak. Okay. Well, I guess we talked about Safari eggplant. Excuse me, we got to talk about Black China. What was her video about her giving head? Yeah. I ain't watched that either. Uh-huh. But they did say, oh, you watched that? Absolutely. <laughs> well, how was that? Before I get to the main point, we got to equal. We done talked about him objectively. Let's talk about her objectively. It was the worstest display of- uh, It was a or- who? He can't even get it out. The worstest display of oral sex I've ever seen. Everybody kept saying it was bad. It was lazy. It, it was, was disrespectful to black culture. It was, <sighs> it was bad. The way everyone keeps describing it was dry. Yep. And that should not be your word in it. <laughs> How is it dry with a mouth? Mouth and balls. <laughs> She'd have had a Starbucks took all the water from her mouth. She'd have drank some water. It was it was wet. It was bad. It was the worst display of oral sex I've ever seen. And if you're going to do it, sis, you might as well do it. Or at least add sound. You know, men aren't really hard. You could just add sounds effects mm-hmm. and kind of distract them with the sound effects. Okay. I see where you're going with that. Do you want me to see? You're like, oh, what is this? No, because just close I, your eyes and listen. No, because it, it got in my head when I was thinking about that lady on World Star. <laughs> oh my 
when she did the grapefruit, the one who invented the grapefruit. It's just a sound. And her ass had all types of dick sucking sounds yeah, and everything. It's just the sounds. And I had my eyes closed. Yeah. And I was like, damn. What the and heck? then you look at you like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's just a grapefruit and a um and a you banana. And she making all types of noises, spit and everything else. I said, I don't know if I should be turned on from this. And again, I didn't watch it, but I have close sources who said it was a beautiful um, penis too. And she was just disrespectful to it. <laughs> <laughs> she said the shaft was a nice golden brown. <laughs> the little head, the mushroom was perfectly symmetrical. It was just very disrespectful what she did. <laughs> she got to redeem herself. What? It was that. I mean, did she look like she enjoyed herself? It no, was a wild. No one did. Who was the person allegedly? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. How, anywho, so we talked about both of them. But what I'll talk about broadly is the reception that both of them received. Mm-hmm. So when Black China stuff come out, she a hoe is whack, blah, blah, blah. But Safari come out, niggas is basically giving him the dab. And niggas is trying to release their own shit. Oh. And how is it received? Because both of them were leaked. Mm-hmm. And both of them happened during, you know, private, you know. So, why is the reception so different? Sexism. Okay. Break down more. It ain't nothing else. You said ain't nothing else less than that. <laughs> it ain't nothing else. Sexism. Period. She's the stripper, or video vixen. Oh, video. Oh, my you God, know. you're old. <laughs> you kids know. don't say that. Now. Oh, well, what the fuck they, they say these days? They're not here for superheading them no more. Well, shit. And remember, we used to be a whole crew of them. Yeah. yeah. Buffy the body. They, you think their money just dried up? I hope not. I hope they at least had a baby by one of these rappers and get oh, the did on, this get nigga these say papers a baby? On, and get some papers I on these niggas. I thought you at least gonna put somebody on speed down. Oh, no. Who Superhead had a baby by? Nas? No, I think oh. that's what she like not really. No, Kumo did some old school. Anyway, she got some papers on that nigga. Yeah. So you think it's just a sexism? I really think it's sexism, but also like, you know, when you see... Black China, or you see both of them, they both of them are sex objects. So I think it's it's um, the reception is different. Hold on, you think Safari is a sex, sexual object? In general, I think both of them niggas is toys mm. for people to look at. Yeah, to consume. Period. Yeah. To consume. Like, yeah. look at the nigga abs and, you know, females want to rub up on them and shit like that. And now, you know, it came out, this nigga got this big D. But females just want to go all rub, down. Uh, rub his abs and go all the way down and shit to the ground, all the way wherever. <laughs> and then the same thing with you know Black China. You know she got the big titty, she got the ass, the you know all this other stuff. Niggas be like, oh, I want to beat that. And so my bigger question: So how does this all play into like this conversation of consent, sexual assault, sexual harassment? Like that's what I said. People be funny for what they want to be funny. Like how do we turn around and this is news now? I don't and know. no one was out saying Safari and Black China rights were abused, and this is sexual harassment, and assault. Whoever leaked this video mm-hmm. and sexual evasion of privacy. That's what I'm saying. I just don't know how people turn it on and turn it off. I don't know. Too heavy. Uh, my question is. Well, who's her lawyer? Lisa Bloom? Did Lisa Bloom make a statement or something? I'm sure she did. Safari needs to hire Lisa Bloom. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nero. I, again, I just seen that. Y'all told us y'all views on Safari's eggplant and Black China's performance. Okay. We want to do should versus must. Yeah, what we got here? All righty. So I came across this article in Medium. I really like Medium. Um, we'll try to link it if I don't forget. Um, And it was just really talking about this idea of should versus must. Um, The way the author breaks it down, an author is L. Luna. She said there's two paths in life. There's should and there's must. Should is how others want us to show up in the world, how we're supposed to think, what we ought to say, what we should or shouldn't do. Um, It's the vast array of expectations that others layer upon us. Um, When we choose should, the journey is smooth and the risk is small. But must is different. Must, not musk. (laughs) Um, There aren't options and we don't have a choice. Must is who we are, what we believe, and what we do when we're alone with our truest, most authentic self. It's our instincts, our cravings, our longings, and the things and places and ideas we burn for. The intuition that swells up from somewhere deep inside us. Must is what happens when we stop conforming to other people's ideas and start connecting to our own. Because when we choose must, we no longer are looking for inspiration out there. Instead, we're listening to our calling from within, um, from some luminous, mysterious place. Mm-hmm. 
And that was just a couple pieces, a couple paragraphs from the article that really stood out to me and really just talked to me. And um, I just wanted to unpack it a little bit with you, Nir. Mm-hmm. So what's your idea of should? You want to start with should first? Yeah. Are I, you a shoulder or a must? I am a must. A shoulder. <laughs> Another shirt, shoulder. I am a must. I'm a shoulder, I think. Mm-hmm. I, I am a must all the way because everything I do has like a, I won't say deeper calling, but it has like this intrinsic call for me. Yeah. Um. I even think about how, you know, me, you, and Neil was doing like our goals and shit like that. And, you know, we was talking about uh, like spiritual and things of that sort. And I was like, you know, while most, most people find spiritual belief in like uh, um, in the construct of church, like for me, exercise and working out is my form of being one with my spiritual being Mm -hmm. and everybody's like "Ooh, really no but like i I think that's more or less how i go like everything i do has a i want to say an intrinsic drive to do that's why you know i'm a i would say a serial hobbyist when it comes to things because like i'm always longing to try and try other things and do other things that I may have an idea for an inkling idea and and I'd be like well why not just try it yeah yeah because I liked even in the article how she pinpoints um like she's fleshing out must more so must Mm -hmm. is why Van Gogh he painted his entire life without receiving public recognition like you know we forget that now right Mm -hmm. so of course his pieces are worth millions and millions and millions but when he did it he just did it before because of him right Um, also why Mozart performed Don Giovanni and Coltrane played his new sound even when critics called it ugly like we forget about that Coltrane's Mm -hmm. I love a good Coltrane Sunday after church when I'm cleaning the house or cooking dinner right and people said that his music was trash right we forget um, that these things happen or if you think of more you know those are huge folks doing mm-hmm. that stuff right but if you think of like why a lawyer in their 30s spent three years writing their novel only to be rejected by three dozen publicists right so when mm-hmm. people do these total career changes i think of i knew somebody who was a um a phd in what some um clinical psych mm-hmm. you know what i'm talking about who was like head director at a huge university making great money Walked away from the job and make opened up a candy shop. Oh yeah, this motherfucker opened the candy shop. In Live the, his dreams. <laughs> so you know, so I just go. I I just love that idea of must, and it looks like when you think of must, it's this combination of job, career, and a calling. When it all comes to together, and it's like, what if your job equals your career, which also equals your calling? Like, what if what all those was one and the same? Yeah, it wouldn't that be ideal, mm-hmm. right? And, and if everyone worked in, as Niram called this genius zone, how it would be a greater, greater area? But then what got me was if must is so great, then why don't people choose that every day? Because mm-hmm. it's scary. What? Why? What you mean? I think it's scary. I, I think a lot of people are, are afraid to live um, their true beings or their true calling when it comes to this stuff because, A, you, you got these outside um influences that are put on you every day yeah. and it's hard to um move from the ingrain like even I, I think about us growing up in the midwest blue collar where the thing was go to school get a good job mm-hmm. go to school get a good job it's like all right i don't went to school i got degrees like a thermometer now do i get a good job and it's like all right now you gotta get a good job and you work it for 40 years and then you finally do what you want to do and it's like why well, i just can't do what i want to do now, now. And I think that's that's the issue or the disconnect that you have when you have all these pressures uh, from your family and sometimes friends where, you know, for example, I, I, I'll at myself. So, you know, I got a degree in health and fitness. I got a degree in health promotion and went back and got a degree in digital media and design. You know, my passion has always been some type of design and things of that sort. And, you know, when I got the first degree, it was like, well, you're good. Why don't you just do that? And it's like, hmm. Something's not. It took connecting. a toll on our relationship. I was like, Jesus, just get a fucking job. <laughs> you know, something's not connecting. And then, you know, I found running, started blogging, you know, and it's like, okay, well, this is what I need to be doing. Naren was going to be a physical therapist, <clears throat> and I was for it. Not, that's all Naren be home. Like, nigga, won't you just go to physical therapy school and be a physical therapist? And it's like, that's not what I want to do. Okay. So I, I think that's the whole thing about like should and must is that. Um, a lot of people, you have these outside influences, even it can be your significant other that's put these pressures on you to like, no, uh, fall in what I think you should be doing or fall into what I think this construct of you should be. 
I get it. So now I'm gonna play devil's advocate with you because this is hard for me because I think I live in the should and what you because the should is a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. So when do you decide to look for your dreams in real life? Like where do you go? Because I think near as a creative and just who you are, I think intrinsically you already knew it. But I think for someone like me and maybe it's other listeners out there, sometimes we'd be like, "Fuck, I don't." Do I write a lit? Like, mm -hmm. where you find your dreams at? Where's the checklist for that? Mm -hmm. And I think there's no checklist. So, how do you begin, you know, going towards it? And I like how the author tied together, like, because this person grew up in Texas and she had a vague idea what it meant to kind of be called for something and kind of figuring out what that meant. And like, she was looking into different philosophers, and there was one called Joseph, named Joseph Campbell that says, if you follow your bit bliss, um, and doors will open where the door has never been opened before. Mm. But I always go back to how do you create this dream? Like, how do you even begin? How do you begin with the blank slate, right? Mm -hmm. How do you get that so in tune with yourself to know what you want to do? How did you do it? Um, I, I think it comes from, like, trying multiple things, trying and failing at a lot of different things until you get there. And I think that's what, what makes – the difference between people who are should and versus musts because a, sh a should person, you know, they'll try something and like, all right, so what's the end goal of this? Like, I should get this by how many days or how many hours I should be good at this, right? And then I can make millions of dollars. Versus a must person, it's like, it's not this intrinsic thing of, I'm just going to keep doing it because I enjoy it and I don't care where the money comes from because. It's just gonna come. Me doing anything else is really a distraction of time yeah. to take away from me actually doing this thing. I love that. And, you know, I, back to my higher ed background, I always need an activity to go with this. And I was thinking, like, okay, so how do I do this? And I was reading what the author says. And the author says something that you should do is kind of write, what do you want your future press release to be? Mm -hmm. So what do you want it to be? And I was like, well, shit, I don't know if I got a product. But what kind of struck me is this idea of writing your obituary, especially when we're having so many – you know, so much death going on. Remember yeah. I was saying I was having a lot of death and I think it kind of ties to it. And it's this idea of writing two obituaries, <laughs> right? So if you write your obituary now for the path you're going on, mm -hmm. so if you continue your path going, going on, what would it say? And then write a second one of ideally what you would want it to say, mm -hmm. right? Because if you think about to really, you know, the big folks, they maybe have one or two sentences about people of what they did, right? But it was really about who they were. I think it's been um, my Uncle Dream who just passed away. I actually read his obituary. And his obituary, did you read his? No, it actually yet. was lit. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you read someone, you're like, yeah, they like baseball. They did this and they mm -hmm. lived. They had some kids. Like, And that said that, right? Yeah. But his was so lit and it had a journey. Like, his is the epiphany is that I had a crooked path with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And y'all know what Nyambi says she on. <laughs> the crooked path. Like, it had everything about, and we might have to come back to, you know, it's still a little raw for me. But they had the, um the story of him and his, how his wife met in the obituary mm. and like how he wanted to be with her. And she was like, nah, son. And like inside jokes of like, you know, you know, one thing he believed is a clean car and still, you know, 50 years later, he still, you know what I'm saying? Mm. They still say things like clean car. And they talked about his journey. Of course he worked. Like, I think he worked at Chrysler, Chrysler, yeah, for over 30 something years. But that was just one sentence. But what they highlighted is that now he was retired more than he worked like do you know what i'm like yeah. that is a fucking sentence i want in my obituary mm -hmm. like i think it was like he worked 28 years at Chrysler, but he was retired 33 like <laughs> and like that was the highlight they like uh -huh. gotcha niggas like right. you know what i'm saying and he talked about his daughter as i said that passed away but then they created like this organized non-profit right. that sent kids to college and they found this new following then they say you know um junior and i put it out there because i know he'll find he always loved the lord but he got a um, little bit more connected with him in 94. And if you start doing the math, he a little what? Later in life. <laughs> Do you see what I'm yeah. saying? Like, so that day to me, he done lived a little life, seen some things, did some things, crooked path. Yeah. He done went to the Lord. When he at the Lord, what he involved in? The committees. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All the stuff he didn't get into the people he done touched. You know what I'm talking about? Even to the point where in the um the hospital scary went to, they got inside jokes from there. And at the line, I never seen this in the bitch where at that line it says note. Cause you know at the last sentence, you know, and he was, you know, also leaves behind a host of close friends, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And then the way my uh Aunt Betty wrote it was a note, and it says in parentheses, I wish I can go get it right now. So I quote it appropriately. Friends aren't just friends they were like family and we constantly had inside jokes stories 
memories, vacation, mm-hmm. travels, advice that will continue to live on. Right. So I had to be taken out to be like, when I mean they, yeah. we're not meaning something that's imaginary. We're talking about real life experience and places. Right. And they got like quotes and all that stuff in there. And that's why I'm like, you know what? When you want to betray, that's what you want life mm-hmm. to say. Right. And when you read this, you be like, this man has lived. <laughs> Blow the cigarette. Uh-huh. And like, that's where it connected me to about this article. So what do I want Nyambi's mm-hmm. obituary to say? I want people at the end to be like, I want people to do the note one kind of cross. <laughs> at the end, it'd be like, sis, <laughs> live. And just throw a Popeye's chicken wing at the casket. Oh, my God. <laughs> Cause that's what she what. This is just what she did. But you even know them, and you've known mm-hmm. what what the short time ten years. Yeah. And what would you say? Like, would you say that cosign? Like, even in his illness, he was lit. He was lit. And like all the names, like everyone's names, like even his names was in here. Mm-hmm. So of course we call him Uncle Junior. He got another name, but they was like also known as Uncle Junior, also known as Cold Jack, also known. I said what? <laughs> who is these names? <laughs> who the hell is and, Cold and be like, Jack? Who is Cold Jack? And you can see the people who was like, yeah, that's Cole Jack. Like, oh, it's Cole Jack. And then who be Uncle, Ju- Uncle Junior? Mm. Deacon so Deacon? Deacon. How is Deacon and Cole Jack the same one? <laughs> 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 and then everybody nicknamed Bo Red. Like all these names uh-huh. that you be like, what? Tell me the story. Anybody with a name like Cole Jack. Cole Jack. Black. <laughs> I'm going to just put this together. This was a crew. Bojack, Babra, LC, and Bo Red. What do they do on the weekend? Play horseshoes and drink dark liquor. Now they older. They just love the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? Like right. just seeing it, all you can do. And the thing, you know, of course I'm sad he's go, but it's crazy when you can read through someone's obituary and start cracking up and mm-hmm. being like, Jesus, this is good, right? It's not many funerals I go to and be like, you know, usually when I read through it, I find at least three misspelled where but this one I was so <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't do that. That's my pet plea. Don't have my shit misspelled in my obituary. I right, let's see at least three misspelled. <laughs> I have to go with my red pen. Oh my God. <laughs> <Not yet. laughs> Especially black ones. I'm like, <laughs> Maybe that need to be my business. Let me proofread this obituary. I do two hour turnaround. Jesus. Um, but I, when I read this article, that just the obituary. You know, what do I want? You know, a Uncle Junior obituary, or do mm. I want the misspelled word obituary? Right. Mm. That's two paragraphs, simple. No, his was like a book. You got to see this shit. Mm-hmm. It's like a book. It got pictures in it, and it wasn't sad. It's been so long. I, Usually when I pick, people, family send obituaries because, you know, we believe in sending my family, put them in the Bible. It's for legacy. I, I look at it and I put it away. I'm done. Mm-hmm. My Uncle June was still sitting on the table because I got to go back to and reread it. <laughs> Cold Jack. Cold Jack. Babra. L.C. And Bo Red. That should be the name of the episode. <laughs> Cold Jack. I'm going to name it in Cold Jack. <laughs> so that's what I really just, you know, I try to empower that mm-hmm. and really – get that into kind of my spirit. So know? so how are you going to practice going towards the must side? Because as a should person, I know it's hard. It's very hard. But the thing is, where have should got me? Mm-hmm. Right? It got me to this situation. I think that's what the biggest conflict at. Because this idea is that should was supposed to provide safety. Mm-hmm. And if should doesn't provide safety, it gets to the point where why didn't you do your must? Right. But you've been so distracted lately that it's like, well, what what is the... <laughs> Right. What is the must? Because like like you said, Niram, I'm thinking I got another 20 years so I got to worry about a must. Right? I don't right. got to worry. I'm still working. I'm still hustling. I'm mm-hmm. on the shoes. I'm doing all that, right? Right. I got 20 years to figure that out. When it got to the point where you went from 20 years to you got 10 minutes. Look, now. So I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I think I've already made steps through it. So I think, you know, publicly, uh, more openly I, I don't think i've never hid the fact that i have depression but i don't think it's something i ever talked about mm-hmm. so calling a thing a thing um like i said in a few episodes ago i'm really working on this forgiveness thing and again it's not that anything negative is happening but i think it's a lot of self-forgiveness um it's working on letting things go and it's really in finding the joy and stuff mm-hmm. right and i think it's uh, taking my own advice so i think i have to start trying some stuff and i have to be okay with failing 
and not that I'm you know what I'm saying? I'm a recovering perfectionist, but I'm not that at all. Like, I'm definitely a done is better than perfect type of person. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I'm just effective, efficient mm-hmm. in the task that I do that people think is, come air quote, comes off perfect, but it doesn't. I think I just do it so quick that people don't have time to go double check. <laughs> Look, done. <laughs> so I think I just have to be okay with trying some stuff and it failing. I, I think especially after this year, and we promise y'all, once everything, the dust settles, we'll let y'all know everything that happened, that failure is hard to take at so many levels, right? Mm-hmm. I only can take so much and function mentally. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, and I know everyone deals with failure daily, but it gets to the point where it's like, oh, no, 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 no. I feel like I'm a character and get out. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. So, you know, knowing what I can mentally handle, um, but I think I'm getting, I'm opening up space and energy to do that. Um, and also just getting to the place where I'm okay with redefining me and starting over. Mm-hmm. I think that's another scary thing for me because yeah. I've worked so long to build such a solid and, and, and firm foundation that just the idea of completely starting over is hard. Um, I think I'm getting getting through other thoughts and percep- perceptions of me. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I, I I don't think I care what folks think. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's it. But I think sometimes p- other people's pictures be so heavy mm-hmm. on me that it's hard for me. It's hard for me to explain. So even with the questions with my mom or friends, like folks to ask me constant questions, and when I be like, well, I just don't know, mm-hmm. and it's like they almost can't comprehend that as an answer from me. Mm-hmm. This is that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Am I explaining that yeah, because you, you, I'm like, I don't know. And you're the type like, oh. of person that's always having a solution of an answer. So when you don't have an answer, it's kind of shocking to people. Yeah. Um, and like, that people don't know where to get it. I, I think a good example is how, uh, you know, for example, Nia, yeah. you know, we both, you know, us hit that man. And it's like, well, why do y'all expect me to host y'all? You know, you talk about women, host y'all, c- cook for y'all. Yeah. Move y'all, uh, 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 you know, move y'all out your house, yeah. talk to you, and do all this other stuff, yeah. and then not get the pussy versus and not <laughs> versus near versus near him, where you just invite him to come over and eat, help you move, yeah. and that be it. Yeah. So I think it's like these expectations that a people put on you, but I think it's also that how you presented yourself to the world or to these people that make um that put these like conceived notions on you yeah so when you don't have an answer it's like earth shattering like what yeah yeah, because they don't have an answer you're gonna be at the best store i said well i like i scare people now they're like what you gonna do i said well i like the bot store Mm. they was like oh you really like it there i said i guess i said Mm -hmm. i'm really trying to figure out what like is Mm -hmm. i told you when i threw my mom off when she's like who you talk to i was like the lord Mm -hmm. straight face (laughs) jesus straight face Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So I really think, like, even, like, looking at this article, like, how they have, like, this big word blob, and it's, like, all the questions that goes through, like, it should mind. Do I have to quit my job? How do I explain any of this to my boss? You know, what do my peers think? You know, what my significant other think? How long would this take, you know, to find, you know, what's what if I leave my job to find my calling and I don't find it, then what then? Yeah. So I think it's, like, all those things that – um for a person like me, like I don't think about. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard for people to understand like what I do, but I was like, I don't care. Yeah. It's like, oh, I work at this tech company and my job is to write reviews and throw parties. And it's like, what? Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Yeah. It's like, I write reviews mm-hmm. and I. Look, I'm sorry, I don't know what practice <laughs> sentence you don't understand. <laughs> and you get paid for it? Yes. Yeah. That's a job. <laughs> it's a job. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, well, I really don't have, have like it halfway. Like, I just do it because, but it actually a distraction for me getting away from me cycling and riding my bike. I said, truthfully, if I could just make a living, ride my bike, running some races and talking to my podcast, I'd be happy. Yeah. Uh. And I think for the shit people, that type of stuff, they look at me like, wow, or. How are you gonna do that, or how are you gonna pay for bills, or what about retirement? Is it or, forever? Yeah. Is this forever, or you know? When is the end day? Is it finite? Right. Versus me, and it's like, well, that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. And it might change. You know, I was a DJ. Like the quote said, once you start doing stuff you love, doors start opening. You start opening. Come on, what do I need to do it? 
<laughs> and but that's you got to step out on what? Faith. Faith. And I think that's interesting that you say that and thinking about that because I think about, you know, like I said, I'm serious. How so all the hobbies or things I've done? I was a DJ. Yeah. For the DJ. I opened for Young Jock and Jeezy in a prime. Oh, my God. I remember that. I, I don't op- know how Neom got to that point. I opened for Young Jock like, and Jeezy in a prime. It, I said, how did they even know you had decent equipment? He's like, they don't. Let's <laughs> step out on faith. <laughs> right. You know, I was in Toastmasters. Yeah. I competed in the World Series of Public Speaking and made it all the way up until the semifinals. Yeah. You know, I, I was a runner. I made it into the the largest magazine in running. Okay. So, we know no, but I'm just saying, like, it's those type of things that must You got a lot of good truth, two truths and a lie. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but, like, I, I think it's those type of things that when you just do it and, like, get into your gene zone and not think about it, like, those are the types of things that just open yeah. that you don't even be thinking about. Like when I was DJing, I didn't have a goal to be like, I'm going to open up for Jeezy and Young Jock. Yeah. It just happened. Like I was just having fun making, you know, $800 and DJing at a party yeah. and playing some good music. And then somebody was like, hey, you want to open for Jeezy? Yeah. Shit, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jeezy like to drink. <laughs> Jeezy like to drink. Yeah, Jeezy like to smoke. Uh-huh. Jesus like to mix Arm and Hammer with his Coke. So I, I think that like on some serious stuff, like when, once you start living or changing your mindset to have that type of thing, and, and though it's, it is hard, because truthfully it's hard for me to even go to the shit side and like think about like logistics and things of that sort when it comes to that. And I even have a hard time with that when it comes to like the events I have to throw for, you know, job number one. Um, like thinking about logistics and things of that sort, and I just like I just want to let it flow. And I'm already there. Mm-hmm. I ask you more about that than you probably. Not. I'm like, so where's the next event? Have you did this? I be sending you places. And she be sending me places, and I'm like, oh okay. Yeah, I'm like, okay, nigga. <laughs> so, and, and I said, that's the thing. Like, I think it's hard, but I think you need a balance. Of, but uh, you know, for the people who are ship people, I do challenge you to, you know, think about what it is to be a must and like have that interested thing. And I think. You know, while we're going through this, and, and that's the reason I keep going back to this is like, while we're going through this stuff, sometimes you need something just to do with your hands, mm-hmm. something that is a cathartic, but so like it just comes so intrinsically that you can do that, and there won't be no voices to haunt you. Yeah, when you know you're feeling down, True. and I think that's hard for you to do because you don't have that. And it's hard to find when you you, you should mentality because it's like, well, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. And it's like, well, start something like, Nikki, you like puzzles? Yeah, oh my it's like, God. no. <laughs> and it's like, well, do you like knitting? Like, I don't know. Yeah. You like running? No. You uh-huh. like cycling? No. Well, what do you like to do? Uh-huh. And I think that's where, or like, what do you want to try? Like, what? Is there anything you would like to try? Uh-huh. Oh, are you asking me? No, I'm oh, just saying I like in general. Boat. <laughs> Hell, well. No. No, but I think that's the thing. Like, instead of focusing on this other stuff, like, do I quit my job? How do I explain this to my peers with my significant other thing? Like, you got to get to the point. It's like, well, how does this make you feel? Like, actually doing it. Mm -hmm. Like, taking in all the other stuff out. Shit, nigga, you want to do a pole dancing class? I don't know. I don't know. You want to go through the cookbook and make every recipe? I I don't know. It's just something that has to have that intrinsic that just gives you some type of joy. Like when I run or I ride, like none of the the bullshits of life never come up. Yeah. I get it. Mm-hmm. I'm trying. I'm working there. Y'all let us know if you should versus must. And more important, let us know what you want that obituary to, say, mm-hmm. to be like. What you want that press release to be like. Yeah. Anything else, Nero? No, it was a good episode. It was a wonderful episode. Again, thank you to um, Preston and Felicia for that beautiful um, black love story. We loved it. Um, as always, to submit your black love stories, go to blacklovematters.com backslash, backslash story to submit a question for Kitchen Table Talk. Shoot us an email at blacklovematters at gmail.com.
and to leave a comment about anything that we talked about today, you can do that on the blog, SoundCloud, Stitcher, any form of social media at Black Love Matters. That's Black Love with no K. Or you can leave us a voicemail at 508-784-1111. That's 508-784-1111. Talk to y'all later. And remember, love, love is, is ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace. Peace.